What's going on guys? Today you are gonna learn how to make this. And uh, probably best not to try this at home. Moving on. A lot of people are confused by rust electricity, but today we're gonna make it simple and show you the best way to do it. The first thing to know about rust electricity is conceptually, it is a lot like electricity in real life. The four things you will typically need are a power source, power storage, an electrical device, and connector components. Since it is the first thing you'll need before using anything electrical in Rust, we will start with the power source. As of February 2021, there are four sources of power in Rust. The first is the small generator on the left. It requires a workbench level 2, 5 high quality metal and 2 gears to craft, and uses low grade fuel to generate 40 power a second. The second is the solar panel on the right. This requires a workbench level 1, 5 HQM, and 1 tech trash to craft, and will generate 20 power so long as the sun is hitting it. This means the solar panel does not generate power at night, and usually only half of the day when it is properly angled at the sun. Third is the Raid Me Beacon, otherwise known as Sweaty Clan Ogre, Helicopter Slap Chop, or the Wind Turbine. This requires a workbench level 2, 500 wood, 10 HQM, 3 gears, and 3 sheet metal to craft. It consumes one power and will generate zero to 150 power depending on wind speed. Higher altitudes will yield stronger winds and thus more power. This will generate power day and night. Day and night. The last is the test generator. This is not available in vanilla rust and only on some modded servers. It outputs 100 power constantly. Once you have a source of power, you will typically want to connect it to a power storage device, aka a battery. There are three in rust, small, medium, and large. The charging rates of all three of the batteries is dependent on power in, with a maximum of 80% efficiency. What this means is if you have 100 power coming into a battery, then the battery will only be charging for 80 power since that is 80% of 100. Each battery holds a finite amount of charge measured in a proprietary value called rust watt minute, abbreviated RWM. The small battery has a 150 RWM and a maximum output of 10. At full charge and maximum output, the small battery will last around 15 minutes. The medium battery has a 9000 RWM and a maximum output of 50. At full charge and maximum output, it will last about three hours. The large battery has a 24,000 RWM and a maximum output of 100. At full charge and maximum output, it will last around four hours. Next, you will want to connect your battery to an electrical device. In Rust, there are many different electrical devices, each requiring different amounts of power to operate. In today's video, we will be using the auto turret, which was updated in February of 2020 to become modular and to require electricity. Auto turrets now consume 10 power. Real quick on auto turrets. Auto turrets can be deployed like so and picked up with the hammer. However, like most deployables, they take damage if you pick them up, so try to place them right on the first time. You can use any attachment on any gun and place that in the auto turret, but the only two useful ones are the muzzle boost and the silencer. The laser sight and the flashlight do not increase the accuracy of the turret. As you can see, not everything can go into the turret, but your broke ass can put a nail gun in there or even any yoka. In my opinion, the best two options are a python or an AK, but if you're trying to flex on your neighbors, throw an M2 in that bitch. The fourth element of electricity and rust are what I'm gonna call connector components. The three we are going to cover today are the ones you will use the most. The splitter, the power branch, and the root combiner. The splitter takes power and splits it into three branches. The power branch takes power and splits it into two branches. The root combiner combines the power from two power sources into one output. One of the advantages the power branch has over the splitter is that you can set the amount of power you want to branch off. Now let's connect our circuit. The first thing you will want to do before connecting a circuit is to think about how much power you will need and what components you are going to use. When you get better at this, you'll be able to plan these things out in your mind, but when you are first starting, it can be helpful to do it on restriction. Link to that will be in the description. In our circuit, we are going to be powering three auto turrets, each requiring 10 power. To do it, we will be using three solar panels, two root combiners, a medium battery, a power branch, and a splitter. Once you have planned out your circuit, you can place your items and start hooking it up. 
First thing we will do is connect our solar panels to our root combiners. Next, we are gonna connect our root combiner to our battery. And as we connect all of our components, we are gonna keep the wires nice and tidy along the walls or on the floors because we aren't plebs, which by the way, comes from the Latin word plebeians used in ancient Rome to describe commoners. Now our battery needs to be connected to our power branch. We connect our battery to our power branch because we have control over how much power to branch off. Because of that control, power branches in general enable the most efficient use of our power. Once we connect our power branch to our splitter, we want to set how much power to branch off to the splitter. We do this by hitting E on the power branch and setting it. For our circuit, we set it to 31 because the splitter is gonna consume one power and each of the turrets need 10. Once that is done, we are good to hook up our turrets. Oh snap, we forgot to put guns in the turrets. To clear a wire connection, hold E on where the wire is connected for one second. Remember that when a turret is on, no one can interact with the turret. So make sure you and all your teammates authorize and put guns in them before they get hooked up. If you have extra fire ammo around, I like to put it in the turret because this ammo has crazy drop. I usually do not like using it, but it is quite effective in a turret. Finally, we can hook up our turrets for real. It's the moment you've been waiting for. What's on the other side of these two beautiful garage doors? Go take care of that shit. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want more Rust content. If you're feeling spicy, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, a big thank you for checking out my work. I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>